All right, hello everyone. It is Saturday, July 1st, 2023. The time is 1846 New York local time. And in this video, I'm going to go through some of the ICT community subreddit and the ICT community discord uh, questions. Um, I'm going to go through some of the stuff that I see people asking. You might be on the same level. Um, you might be on the same level as some of these people. You might not be. But maybe this will help you. Maybe maybe it won't. Um, first off, Lumi Trader stuff is very good. I think it's overly complicated, but it's good, uh, and you should go look at it. Um, overly complex, yes. Too many drawings, yes. Very very good, also yes. So I would have a look at her stuff. Very nice person. I talked to her. Labels marking chart. What are some of the most important labels you have on your daily chart? I always have midnight open 11 a, until 11 a.m. Previous day high and low of 9.30 to 12, 12 to 1.30, 1.30 to 4 and the high and low of the London session. I also mark the DR dealing range and the IDR. Are there any others that we should be mindful of or include? This is too mechanical. Okay, your trading needs to be both mechanical and discretionary. So if it's 1400 at the very end of the day in New York time, you've only got an hour left of trading. You're nowhere near the midnight open price. Doesn't need to be on your chart. I don't know what to tell you. It just doesn't. Um, if you're nowhere near the midnight open price, doesn't need to be on your chart. You're just taking up space. Previous days, highs and lows. Again, if it looks like price is about to if it looks like price is, is aiming for the previous day high, it's aiming for the previous day low, have it on your chart. If, uh, if it looks like price is far away from either of those two points and they're really not relevant to what's happening right now, they don't need to be on your chart. 12 to 1.30, that's the New York lunch, the highs and lows of New York lunch. Again, Number one, you don't ever need to really have these drawings on your chart because you can always hover with your crosshair. If you know what you're looking for, just hover with your crosshair. So if it looks to you like price is about to aim for the New York lunch higher low, if it looks like that is in play, that is what price is driving to right now, then put it on your chart. If you are 200 points away from New York lunch high or New York lunch low, you're taking up space that you're you're distracting your attention from what actually matters right now and when you're day trading you need to be right right now so again you have to be very selective with the drawings that you're going to put on your chart they need to be relevant to what is happening right now <laughs> they don't need to be relevant to something that might happen tomorrow or two weeks from now uh, and this is too mechanical so there's a balance between mechanic, mechanical system trading and discretion trading. And if you want to become a master of ICT trading, of algorithmic theory, you need to learn that. You have to look at what is most salient right now. Where price is reaching to right now. Okay, what is salient right now? Okay, if, and this is too mechanical. The high and the low of the London session. I also mark the dealing range and the implied dealing range. The dealing range is going to change a lot. Every time that price breaks out to a new high or a new low, you're in a new dealing range. And so that's why I'm not keeping that, that drawing on my chart unless it's important for some reason right now. Okay, I can generally look at the chart, use my crosshair tool, and see the dealing range, see the high and the low that we're within, we're, within which we're currently operating uh, right now. So this is too mechanical. All right, this is too mechanical. Um, you're not thinking of it correctly. FEG fill status outside of the first trading hours. Hey everyone, I'm trying to find out if there are statistics on FEGs being filled in general. For example, once the gap starts filling, how often does it complete the gap fill? The silver bullet must be the highest probability trade, but outside of these hours, I'm wondering how many people use the FEGs consistently for scalping. This, this is way off of thinking correctly. The, the FEGs are not a classic chart pattern. That's not how this works. They're showing you an inefficiently delivered price, and they're all over the place. I talked to you in one of my videos about advanced gap theory. Um, statistics on FVGs being filled, how could you ever possibly make a statistic on that? There's so many of them. 
is that would be virtually impossible, I think, to keep a statistic. But why would it matter? You're thinking of it. This is this person. Obviously, has watched like some of Michael's stuff, but not enough of it to really get the big picture. Hasn't really delved into it enough. Uh, it's not a classic chart pattern. It's not like a head and shoulders pattern. It's not a Thomas Bolkowski. You know, how often does the head and shoulder pa- pattern work? It's not a Thomas Bolkowski's candle pattern. That's not what the fair value gap is. It's just showing you, hey, here's an inefficiency in the marketplace. And then what you do with that, you have to learn what to do with that. Uh, So statistics are not it. Okay? Um, You know, this MIC free one, two, three, four, you got work to do. Uh, The silver bullet must be the highest probability trade. Not maybe. It's a very high probability trade, probably 90%. But even during the setup hour, even during the time, you'll find that there'll be multiple inefficiencies formed. And the ultimate key to getting the silver bullet correct is not the fair value gap, it's the draw on liquidity. The fair value gap is refining your entry. It's an entry mechanism, that's it. The, the point of the silver bullet model is that you are trying to get in the market shortly after the initial volatility of a market open has come in Okay, and you're trying to get the draw on liquidity correct after that. The most important aspect is not the, not the fair value gap. You're missing it. It's the draw on liquidity. You need to know where price is going. You need to make a buy, like a bullish model and a bearish scenario in your head. And if price starts trading up, where's it going? If price starts trading down, where's it going? So it's all a multi-step process, and this is this is kind of treating it like it's a. Uh, you're, you're you're missing it. I can tell this person hasn't watched all of his stuff, and if this person has watched all of his stuff, it's not getting it. Not getting it. Um, it's not a. It's not a. It's not a classic chart pattern. Is it worth learning order blocks? Worth what? I mean, worth your attention? Worth your time? Worth your money? Worth what? Kind of a silly question, but I've watched and studied 2022 under sand, but I think OB might help. I don't know. If this is where you're at, you got a lot of work to do. Okay? You got a lot of work to do. A lot. You probably got one to two years before you should get anywhere near a price chart. Okay? You're not you're not there yet. Worth what? You need to, you got a lot of work to do. Anybody know when his books are coming out? He said one million new subscribers. That's correct. JPY yen and Australian dollar pairs in Asian session. What does ICT think of yen and Australian dollar pairs and the price delivery these pairs have in the Asian session? Uh, he doesn't touch yen for personal reasons and. He doesn't really teach the the Asian session. All of his concepts, of course, can be used in the Asian session. And ignore Lumi traders. Will SMC and IC concepts last forever? If you want them to. I'm new to ICT concepts. How should I start learning it and where should I start? I want to start learning ICT concepts but still can't figure out where to start. Um all of it but model 2022 significant slash volume level indicators well first off you're not ready for this style of trading if you still think that like volume exists you're not there you're not there you're not getting it I talked to you about how volume is not real about only 10 to 5 percent of order flow actually matters so you'll never hear ICT talk about volume that you're thinking option boys or you're you're not there yet. So you're not ready for this style of trading. Okay? If you still think that volume matters, this is not your style of trading. And if you're thinking indicators, this is not your style of trading. Have anyone has anyone found indicators that have, help, have been helpful? with ICT concepts for identifying liquidity grabs. It's too rudimentary. You're not thinking about it correctly. 
I understand that on TradingView there's Lux Algo and there's other automatic indicators. You should really move away from that. Um, you're going to hinder your own learning and hinder your own development if uh, if you're depending on what Michael is not telling you. I shouldn't say that. What you don't understand is that they're all over the place. Like it's a full description of everything that's happening in price. Okay. Every single fluctuation, every single swing, every single everything, Michael has it described. It's all descriptions of everything that price has done. There's nothing that f slips out of the cracks. So, the f so a couple things that indicate to me that you've really maybe only watched a few videos of his and maybe you've watched some of his stuff. Number one, you'll never hear Michael talk about volume. Number two, you'll never see or, or hear about Michael using an indicator. Uh, and then liquidity grabs, that's not something that he says. So I know that you're focusing on like T-Trades, you're focusing on third-party uh, ICT videos. You've watched probably some of the um, like ICT primers, I can tell. Well, how do I know that? Because the words that you're using, the liquidity grabs, you won't you won't hear Michael use that term. That's a third party term. That that's something that um, someone other than Michael would say. Michael would never use the term volume, and Michael would never use an indicator. So I know that you've been watching like T trades. You've been watching Tyler trades. You've been watching uh, basically everybody but Michael. I know that just just from your question. What is so special about the 50% fib? I've seen price at that level. Why? This this guy here answers it basically accurately. Basically, 50% draws a line between premium and discount, and this is a general principle of market to cone. In I don't know what cone means. In discount, which is below 50% to go long again, vice versa for short. Price always moves from premium to discount, and then from discount to premium. That's basically correct. Yeah. Basically correct. It's an algorithmic level. When does power of three start? Does it start at 1700 New York local time? Okay. Uh, this is all the same guy asking a bunch of questions over and over again that are all kind of silly. That's the community Reddit stuff. That's all I'm going to go through. Let's go to the community Discord. And let's go through some of the questions. Why does ICT teach that the New York Open is 0830? According to everyone everywhere else, it's 0930. Yeah, so 930 is New York Stock Exchange Open, 0830 is News Embargo Lift. 0830 is more important for Forex, but it's important to both. You just, yeah. If you don't really know when the New York Stock Exchange opens, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, that's pretty public knowledge. You have a lot of arguing here, a lot of arguing. Low resistance liquidity run doesn't highlight where liquidity pools are residing, but how easy it is for price to reach them, more or less correct. When he wrote, this is classically seen just an, just under an old high or above an old low. It might mean that when price bounces off PD array like the one in the picture, which appears to be a bare sort of block, price has shown a willingness to go lower, and those relatively equal lows running sell stops below them, hence the low resistance name. More or less correct, yeah. More or less correct. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's just not a lot of order flow between point A and point B. Not a lot of st structure to stop price from going where it wants to go. Um, yeah, a lot of arguing. A lot of arguing. A lot of arguing. More arguing. How, what are the KZ for Forex and indices? 
you are not there yet. My point of view, it took liquidity, made a market structure shift and went higher, turtle soup. All right. I don't use mitigation blocks basically at all. Um, never been a concept that I fully think that I've understood. Bunch of Forex people. More Forex people. Hello, trader, period. I have you are doing well. I have a question. So I know a lot of ICT traders tack entry on one minute time frame. But for me, since the one men's candles move very fast, I don't have enough time to put my SL and TP. So those who take entry on one minute time frame, how do you take entry on one minute time frame? I perform a rain dance. I haven't watched Scout Skyper and I just watched one to four. Okay, let's see. Yeah, a bunch of advertising. I advertise a lot. Um, just trying to find any more questions. I think that's about it. Hello brothers, I wanted to know which trading module is best. They're all good. I want to go with one trading module, probably Silver Bullet. Okay. Does anyone know how much leverage ICT uses? Hmm. Okay. ICT says that if a significant move is made in London, it is better to avoid New York AM. But since the London move of yesterday did not really exceed the average daily range, I would not qualify London as, as a significant move. This is my interpretation of how price moved yesterday. It's generally true. It's a generally true statement. So I heard that ICT said that wick is gap. Does it refer to every wick as gap or does it have to be on a specific condition? The longer the wick, the more likely it is an inefficiency. These things are discernment, not science, sometimes. What's the difference between rejection block and the CE wick? Because I identify well, they're two different price levels. Do you know whether it's going to turn at the rejection block or whether it's going to turn at the CE of the wick beforehand? No. No, you don't. Uh, hello. Okay. All right, that's all I'm going to go through. Uh, this has been some questions answered from Reddit and from uh, Discord, as you can see, uh, if you still think that like ICT stuff is going away because uh, people are trying to use it, no. Uh, some people here are closer, some are further away. Um, if you, you know, if you if you are in some of the same boat as some of the people that I just talked about. It's work to do. All right. That's going to be it for this one. Bye.